That's right. Welcome in. Welcome back, folks, to the latest major Notre Dame fan divide edition of the Always Irish Show. As always, you can find that program on YouTube. Do subscribe if you haven't yet. Appreciate it very much. Give the video a thumbs up. That helps me as well. Notifications on. That way you'll be alerted every time a new episode drops. You don't want to miss it. Twitter, search bar, Always Irish, or at Always Irish, Inc. Emails, Always Irish, and at gmail.com. Audio only, anywhere you want me. You can get me 312-988-15, the call-in line. Bring it up, folks. New scheduling for that coming out. I'm playing with some different ideas in the offseason to maximize the people that can join us. I'm playing around with an idea of like a morning show once a week and then something in the evening, uh, another day or night to catch more people. I'm still playing with that. Hang with me and I'll, I'll put something out on it, okay? So if, if I've said it once, I've said it a million times on this program, nothing's ever black and white, clear cut with Notre Dame and Notre Dame fans. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter what happens. Something will happen and I'll feel like, oh, it's obvious this should be the natural reaction of all the Notre Dame fans. Only to log into Twitter and find out I'm dead wrong. Only to log into my YouTube comments and find out I'm dead wrong. Only to fire up that Gmail account and find out how wrong I am. Nothing's ever black and white with Notre Dame where everybody agrees. It's just never. It seems no matter what, good news, bad news, something in between. Nobody ever just agrees. It's just so interesting to me. And I'm sure every fan base has this to an extent. I feel like maybe this phenomenon is more pronounced to me for a couple reasons. One is doing what I do. Like I hear from a lot more Notre Dame fans than a lot of regular Notre Dame fans might because I do this show and I write for USA Today Fighting Irish Wire. So people have their Notre Dame thoughts and then they send me a dozen emails after the game or leave me voicemails or whatever. So some of it is I think I hear and see more of everybody's ideas because I'm the, I do this. I'm one of the people who do this. And then when people have an idea, they reach out. So I do think some of it is I'm exposed to more ideas just by the nature of what I do, I ask for that engagement. So I see more of it than I feel like a lot of people might. After every game, my email box, I get a hundred more emails of people mad or happy or whatever. So I end up seeing more opinions. I think that's a part of it. Here's another part of it though. I think some of this is very unique to Notre Dame because the Notre Dame fanhood is very unique. Think about it. It is not geographical. It is not like Oklahoma. And and most of the people who like Oklahoma grew up near Oklahoma, right? Nebraska, people that like Nebraska, they pretty much you had to grow up in Nebraska. There's no reason to like Nebraska football. That's a good example. All right. When most of your fan base is from the same region, same kind of demographic, uh, same kind of mindset not overall but like different areas have different general vibes like when most of the people are from the area immediately where the school is you end up with a lot more homogeneous thoughts where everything's kind of uniformed a lot of people think similarly they're from similar environments similar childhood similar area notre dame don't have that you got people from all walks of life from all different countries of life Half the fan base wasn't smart enough to go to Notre Dame, but is Irish Catholic to the core, and Notre Dame represents all those values on a national worldwide scale. So when you got all of that, and you have all these people from other states and other countries coming to Notre Dame, and then spreading out afterwards all over, that's where you get different viewpoints that are very varying because everybody has these vastly different relationships with Notre Dame from their childhood, from being at Notre Dame, whatever it is, all of that. So I do think for me, this is more pronounced because I see and hear more of everybody's thoughts than a a regular person who doesn't do this for a job might. And also just that Notre Dame fan base is so unique. Uh, The Subway alumni are their own contingent. 
and and the alumni base spread out all over. Everybody has different views about Notre Dame. So it, I, it makes sense to me to a certain extent. So as we all know, last week, Notre Dame landed grad uh, transfer grad quarterback, Sam Artman from Wake. And the response has been absolutely fascinating within the fan base. Absolutely fascinating. The range I've heard is everything from Notre Dame is now uh, a title contender, a legitimate title contender. They're winning a title next year. I've heard that. And then all the way down to he is an overrated, exaggerated Ian Book, non-NFL player. And now we're messing up the quarterback room, Buckner's development, and Notre Dame showing no loyalty at all. And this is all going to backfire. All of those are opinions I've heard, folks, in the last few days. Everything from John, I genuinely think this makes us contenders, too. I don't like the way this fits and feels for Notre Dame. No loyalty to Buckner. This is a red flag. Uh, It's going to backfire. Look at the range of outcomes there. From title contender on one end to stunning the growth and going nowhere, ruining the culture on the other end. That's how wild this is. Like, that's the range. But what I don't see a lot of people saying is reality might just be right in the middle. Right in the middle. And that's a very unplaced, unpopular place to be in a lot of areas in life. Think about politics right now. It seems like it, they want to put you all left. All right. If you're trying to be in the middle and reasonably look at both sides and find solutions in the middle. That doesn't work. That's why we don't have a third neutral moderate party. It doesn't work that way. The money only flows in all the way to the right and all the way to the left. They're not going to do it in the middle, right? So in that fair middle is a very unpopular place to be in America. Let me tell you, title contenders on the high end. Let me ask you a couple of questions. If that's you and you're emailing me, you know who you are. That obviously means you love Hartman. All right, I get that. I'm looking at that body of work and I like it too. How does Hartman though fill out some of the other roster holes I'm worried about next year, especially on defense? Now you can argue that if Hartman's the starter and he runs the offense, great. You could argue that does help the defense because theoretically they're going to be out there less If Notre Dame's putting together more good drives, they have less, the defense is out there less. And obviously, if Hartman pays off with more points, the defense doesn't have to be as perfect to win ball games. I get that part of it. But I'm talking about, I'm starting to toss and turn at night worrying that Notre Dame's light on that defensive front. I don't like the way that feels. I don't like the way that feels. I toss and turn at night sometimes because I, I, those linebackers under, underperformed all damn year. And I thought they were going to be one of the uh, stronger points of the roster. That makes me nervous. I need a little more depth on the back end to help out Morrison back there. I'm up about that. So this can turn into a dynamic where Notre Dame's offense gets to where we all want it. And then the defense slides back. No, I'm not interested in that. No. But, like, that's what I'm asking. If you're saying you think Notre Dame's a title contender, you got to tell me how Hartman coming here fills those gaps I'm concerned about on the defensive side of the ball. Number two, schedules matter in college football. Notre Dame's going to have a very hard one again. You have that middle window of the schedule where you have Ohio State, I believe a bye, USC, Then you have Wake, and you're like, oh, what are you mentioning Wake for? You don't think Wake's going to have a little extra juice for Hartman, their old quarterback, now playing in Notre Dame? So that window, U.S. uh, Ohio State, USC, angry Wake with a point to prove, Clemson, that's a heck of a tough run there in the middle of your your year. Notre Dame's entire year is built in this four-game run. That's it. So you have no worries about that schedule being a pretty tough one. I say it all the time. This schedule and last year's are 10 times harder than Kelly's last one where the hardest game he had was Cincinnati at home and he couldn't win it. Couldn't win it. That was the hardest game on the schedule was Cincinnati at home. Kelly couldn't handle it. Mighty Cincinnati, world-beating Cincinnati. 
SEC caliber Cincinnati. Kelly couldn't handle that. Desmond Ritter too much. Couldn't do it. Couldn't handle it. It's unbelievable. So that's the other issue with the people that think we're title contenders. Schedules matter. Notre Dame's in the middle of a, a tough two-year stretch there that overshadows anything in terms of difficulty Kelly had lately. The other thing Kelly benefited from more than anything else is the fact that most of his tenure, USC was in the dumpster. That helped Kelly so much with everything at Notre Dame for what he did accomplish, the fact that they were bad, right? The whole time, pretty much. What do you think, Frank? Tell the people what you think, Frankie. So, so you have that on the high end. And then on the anti-Hartman, no loyalty to Buckner end, it's like this is not the Notre Dame way. This is setting a bad precedent and sending a bad message. This isn't how Notre Dame should do it. You're doing Buckner dirty. This is going to backfire on Notre Dame, and, and we're losing our values. I, I get those messages. I'm not making this up just for material or content. I get these messages, so I want to address them. If you're in that camp, here's what I say. You got to understand the risk protection being taken here. It's perfectly logical. Last year, Notre Dame didn't take a grad transfer, ran with Buckner and Pine, both low on experience, and it burned Notre Dame bad when Buckner got hurt early. In the, it burned Notre Dame bad, and they cannot be in that position again, and it's the exact position they're going to be in now that Pine's gone. You're going to be in the exact same spot if you didn't get a transfer guy. They simply could not risk that. Now, the fact that the transfer guy they got is really pretty damn good is great news. But it's perfectly logical to me that everybody needs to understand why they felt they couldn't afford this risk two years in a row. Everyone has to understand that logically. So that's number one. You got to get that part of it. He tried to roll the dice and let the young guy go, and it burned him last year. He's not doing it again. And it would be one thing if it was a transfer guy to like pile in the number two spot where like you knew it was going to be Buckner and then a guy number two to insulate you there. No, we got a guy that could be the one. It just, it pegs you down then the pecking order. That's just how it goes. But everybody should perfectly understand the risk protection going on here and why. Last year's why. It's obvious. No one could blame anybody for that. Number two, you're just going to have to have some trust in your head coach and the direction he wants to go and how he wants to build this. You're just going to have to at some point with certain things. You're just going to have to trust his, his instincts. And that's uncomfortable, but I, there's nothing else you could do to some extent. And number three, this is college football now. You got to accept some of this stuff as reality, even for Notre Dame, that is a little uncomfortable or unnatural or isn't the way we're used to doing it. That is just the new reality. Everything's different now. And Notre Dame's got to be a part of it to an extent to compete while also trying to maintain their values. It's very tricky. Tough line to walk, tough needle to thread. All right? But this is college football now. And you got to accept some of this stuff as a modern reality, even at Notre Dame, a very traditional place. So in conclusion, I don't get why everybody has to jump to these massive conclusions one way or the other, where it's either national title playoff contender, or you're totally ruining the culture. This sends a bad message. The team's going to check out on Freeman because of this. I've gotten a lot of those messages, you guys. I got a lot of those concerns. So I, I just... <laughs> I don't think it has to be one way or the other. I think Notre Dame just got much better with Hartman. But also, in no way am I saying that we're a title contender right now. I have too many personal question marks. Now, if you breeze through that easy early part of the schedule, then take care of Ohio State at home and go into the bye, then, then I'm talking different. Because then you're undefeated and you beat Ohio State at your place. All right? Then I'm talking different. But until I see that, I don't know. I got a lot of questions. And a lot of them are starting to flip over to the other side of the ball. It's frustrating. So 
I, I just see too many question marks. So just be in the middle. There's nothing wrong with being in the middle on this right now. Optimistic, excited, wait and see, have compassion for Buckner for the, the bad timing of bad luck he's had. You can have all that at the same time and wait and see. It's just everything's changing, you guys. College football's changing fast. And Marcus Freeman's trying to find a way to keep Notre Dame competitive without having to give up everything we value, right? So it's it's a tough job that he has. I think he's doing a fine job of it. Um, but it's wild to me how nobody in this fan base agrees on anything. I, I just, it, from this is awesome, big boy football, we're playoff contenders. All the way to the other side of this is going to ruin the culture. Just wait and see. This is going to cause that rot to begin. I, it, that is wild. I just do not see that at all. I think these players all know this is how it goes now. They all have friends on their teams that have up and left in the portal to go somewhere else and play. The players know this is how it goes now. Don't let it hang you up as a fan. The players get it. So I, I just, we don't need these absolute massive conclusions one way or another when we're all just guessing. We're all just guessing. This isn't going to kill the culture. If anything, I think it's the other way. I think it's the other way. And I think it kind of sends a message that if the guys we have in here aren't getting the job done, we're finding other guys. I like that message. I want these guys to get Notre Dame degrees and all that too, but life can't be perfect for everybody all the time. So I get that this is just kind of like not the usual Notre Dame way. It's just the modern way, I think. And so I'm trying to stay away from these big uh, pronunciations of what this is going to definitely mean or not. Um, but uh, we're just going to wait and see, folks. So this is really interesting. And the, the dynamic never ends. We never agree on everything. We never agree on everything. Is it good or bad in Notre Dame land? Who knows? Who knows? So I want to know what you guys think. I think both these extremes are very extreme, and I'm not down with either of them. What do you think? Let me know.